We are glad that you have joined us tonight for Revive America. This night has been prayed over, and we are believing for mighty outpouring of the Holy Spirit, not only in this room where we are tonight, but in your homes, in your living rooms, wherever you find yourself right now. Let me encourage you over this next little bit as we enter into the presence of God through worship, through praise, no matter what you're going through in your life tonight, no matter what's happening in your life right now, your praise and your worship goes far beyond your circumstances. And so tonight, let's reach in. Let's go a little bit deeper. Let's stir the atmosphere with our praise and with our worship. And let's just call on heaven and let's just ask him to come tonight. Come on, sing with me, worship with me tonight. And our Father, all of heaven roars your name. Sing louder. Let this place erupt with praise. Can you hear it? The sound of heaven touching earth. The sound of heaven touching earth. And spirit break out. And break our walls down. And spirit break out. And come down, and King Jesus, you're the name we're lifting high, your glory is shaking up the earth and skies, revival, we want to see your kingdom here. Wanna see your kingdom here? And spirit break out and break our walls down. Oh, and spirit break out. Lord, break our walls down. Spirit break out and break our walls down. Revival, Lord, we want to see your kingdom come. We want to see your kingdom come. Spirit break out. Break our walls now, oh, Lord Spirit, break out, and heaven come down. It's our prayer tonight, Father Lord, come down, Father Lord, meet us where we are tonight, Lord. Lord, we know that you reside in heaven. Lord, that Jesus sits at the right hand of God the Father, making intercession tonight. But Lord, tonight, Lord, would you just come down here? Would you come down and meet us right where we are, Lord? Right here in this moment, Lord, we just come, Lord, to worship you, Lord. To say, Lord, we need you more. We need you more, God. Yes, we need you more, Jesus. I need you more, more than words can say. I need you more than ever before. I need you, Lord. Jesus, I need you more. I need you more, more than yesterday. Then 
Can you just slip that to him right now? I need you more, God. I need you more. I need you more. Oh, Lord, I need you more and more. More than anything, I need you more. Right here in your presence is where I belong. This old broken heart has finally found a home. Lord, I'll never be alone. Right here in your presence is where I belong. This old broken heart has finally found a home. Lord, I'll never be alone. you more, more than yesterday. Lord, I need you right now in this moment, God. Oh, more than anything, I need you more than ever before. I need you, Lord. Yes, I need you more. And I need Oh, I need Thee Every hour I need Thee Bless me now, my Savior I come to Thee I come Come on, sing it to my need I need Thee
there in your right where you are right now can you just lift your voices in your own way and say i love you lord i love you jesus mm, there's no other place i want to be lord than in your presence god that over your life. My God, how great you are. How great, how great you are. My God, how great you are. How great, how great you are. Come on, let your praise take you to another place. Let your worship take you to the presence of God. Come on, just lift your voices. Sing to the Lord tonight. As you sing, as you praise, as you worship, you're stirring the atmosphere. Come on, things begin to change. Things begin to break when you're worship. Come on, don't, don't like make light of a song. Don't make light of the worship. Declare it in the atmosphere. Lord, you are great, God. You are great. As we sing this tonight, somebody needs to remind yourself tonight of the faithfulness of God. Somebody needs to remind himself tonight of the goodness of God, that he's never failed us. He's always come through. So, Lord, we remind ourselves, Lord. Lord, we remind ourselves, Father, Lord. You are great. You are marvelous, Lord. There's no one like you, God. Lord, if you've done it before, you'll do it again. Yes, you will. 
have done great things and you're gonna do it again you have done great things yes you have you have done great things lord bless your holy name lord yes you are great you are good I praise you, God. Mm. We declare, Lord, your righteousness. We declare your holiness tonight, Jesus. Mm. Lord, we worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And this is how I fight my battles. And this is how I fight my battles. And this is how I fight my battles. Yes. This is how I fight my battles. Look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. Yes. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. Come on, somebody just needs to sing that into the atmosphere in your house. Somebody needs to begin to just declare that. This is how I fight my battles, and this is how I fight my battles. Yes, with my worship, this is how I fight my battles. With my praise, this is how I fight my battles. Yes, this is how I fight my battles. Somebody needs to learn this weapon tonight. You need to learn the weapon of worship. You need to learn the weapon of praise. Mm, there's power. There's power. Mm, this is how we fight our battles. Yes. This is how I fight my battles. fight my battles mm, this is how I fight my battles thank you Lord thank you Lord yes. mm, this is how I fight my battles this is why your praise this is why your worship is so important because battles are being won walls are being broken down chains are being broken when you praise come on you can't be in an argument while you're worshiping you can't be in a fight when you're when
when you're in battle with somebody else. Come on, in the heavenlies, we're doing a battle right now. There's a battle that's happening in your praise and your worship. Yeah, this is how it may look like I. Look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I fight my battles. Hallelujah. And this is how I fight my battles. Yeah. This is how I fight my battles. how I fight my battles. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. On Wednesday nights at our church over the past month, over the past four or five months now, we've been meeting on Wednesday nights and praying. Praying for the state of our nation. Praying for this pandemic that we're in the middle of, for deliverance, for, for a cure. Not, no, not for government's intervention, but for Jesus' intervention. One of the things we've learned is we fight our battles with our worship. But there's a song that we've started singing in the middle of this that we've been declaring at our church. There's a song that we've been declaring into the atmosphere that we've been believing and we've been seeing things take place as we've been declaring it. So tonight we want to declare it over this place. Tonight we want to declare it over this city. Tonight we want to declare it over this state. Tonight we want to declare it over this nation in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Lord, we worship you. And there's a breaking in my favor. And there's a shifting. Coming in my direction, and there's a breaking. Come on, it's real simple. In my favor, in my favor. Come on, you're singing it into the atmosphere. We're doing battle here. There's a shifting. There's a shifting in my direction. In my direction, I believe it, Lord. And there's a breaking in my favor as I pray. And there's a breaking in my favor. a breaking in my favor and there's a shifting mm, thank you Jesus in my direction and there's Thank you, Lord. 
Halleluja. Halleluja. Halleluja, Lord, we bless you. Just one more time, sing it one more time. There's a breaking in my favor, and there's a shifting. breaking in your life tonight. You need a shifting in your life tonight. Come on, declare it over your life. Declare it over your home. Declare it over your children. There's a breaking, Lord. There's a shifting. Yes. Oh, Lord, we bless you, Jesus. Mm. And there's a over our city, Lord, in our favor. Here's a shifting, there's a shifting in the atmosphere over this nation. Hallelujah. In our direction, Lord. We prophesy tonight, Jesus. There's a break. Welcome to Revive America. The Spirit of the Lord's in this in this studio right now. We've been worshiping. I feel a breakthrough anointing. I believe God has a breakthrough for you tonight. I believe God has a miracle. You're at a threshold of a miracle right now. I want to encourage you, call somebody, tell them to tune in to 16.1. Be a part of what God's doing. Those of you that are on Facebook, please share. Start a watch party. 
I, I just feel like this is going to be an amazing few moments here by live stream. We have Pastor Danny with us. He's worshiping, pressing in. And we're just going to continue. For those of you that just joined us by live television, just lift your hands up right there in your living room. Glory. Thank you, God, for breakthrough. Thank you, God. This is a breakthrough moment right now. Every stronghold is going to be loose. Every principality, every lie, every deception, every attack of the enemy is going to be broken off of lives tonight. God, we thank you, Lord, for an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. We thank you, Lord, for revival, God, that we are in the right moment for a move of your spirit. Come on, saints, in the studio, just lift your voice by television, Facebook. Let's just lift our voice all over America right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We need you, Lord. Come on, press in. Press in. Press in. Press in. Let's not just play church tonight. Let's get a breakthrough. Our nation needs a breakthrough. Our cities need a breakthrough. Our churches need a breakthrough. Come on. Come on, intercessors. Come on, prayer warriors. God, America needs revival. America needs revival. America needs revival. Oh, this is a time to cry out. This is the time to get between the porch and the altar and cry out for an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. God, send your spirit, Lord. Pastor Danny, can you just sing and continue to worship? Hallelujah. Yes, yes. We need a breakthrough. We need a breakthrough. I feel like there, yes, I feel like there are those that are watching. You, you are in desperate need of a breakthrough. You're in desperate need. The Bible said there was a woman with an issue in her life, and she was at a desperate need. She tried doctors. She tried everything. But she broke through the crowd, and she touched the hem of his garment. And the Bible said she was made whole. Breakthrough right now. Cry out right where you're at. Get a hold of the hem of his garment. Get your miracle. One word that could define what we need in this moment of history. If there is one word that can define what our nation needs, what families need, what churches need, I believe that word is breakthrough. And if we can all wrap it into one word and just that's all we can say that would just cover everything that we need God to do, I believe that word is breakthrough. Breakthrough. We need breakthrough in our nation. We need breakthrough in our cities. We need breakthrough in our economy. Breakthrough in our church systems, in our homes. Come on. Uh, if you agree with that, just cry out breakthrough. Say, God, I need a breakthrough. 
I need a breakthrough. I need this thing to break. I need this thing to break. I need depression to break. I need sickness to break. I need fear to break. I need strife to break. God, I need a breakthrough now, now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. <laughs> Woo. I feel something happening. I feel the Holy Spirit doing something. The river of God's doing something. Oh! Hallelujah! <laughs> your way, Holy Ghost. Yes. Yes. <laughs> mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the river of God. Thank you for the river of God. <laughs> Thank you for the river that flows. The river that transforms. The river that breaks through. Oh, I feel the river breaking through tonight. I feel the river breaking through, transforming, changing. Just let the Holy Spirit just rush in. Let that river flow through. Let it transform. Let it change. Let it break. Hallelujah. The river is flowing tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's an honor to be here again tonight. We were here the night before election, and it was such a powerful, powerful broadcast. Our largest viewership we've ever had in three years, I believe. God's doing something. In spite of all that's happening in the world, God is doing something. And I want you to stay with me for a few moments. We're going to... Just release a word, and we're going to end in an atmosphere of worship tonight. So glad to have Pastor Danny with me. But I want to just refer to Genesis chapter 29. If you're watching by Facebook, if you need prayer, we do have somebody manning the Facebook page that they will pray with you. Get your breakthrough tonight. But I want to read out of Genesis 29. Uh, I want to start with... Start with verse 7. Genesis 29, 7 says this. And he said unto them, verse 7, And he said, Lo, it is yet high day. Neither is the time that the cattle should be gathered together. Water ye the sheep, and, and go feed them. And they said, We cannot until the flocks be gathered together, until they roll the stone from the well's mouth. Then we water the sheep. And while he yet spake with them, Rachel came with her father's sheep, for she kept them. And it came to pass, when Jacob saw Rachel, the daughter Laban, his mother's brother, and the sheep of Laban, his mother's brother, that Jacob went near and rolled the stone from the well's mouth and watered the flock. And Jacob kissed Rachel and lifted his voice and wept. Revelations chapter 22, verse 17, I like the Good News translation. It says it this way. The Spirit and the bride say, come. Let those who hear this say, come. Let those who are thirsty, I believe there are those that have tuned in tonight that you are thirsty. You've gathered across America because you're thirsty for a move of God. Those who are thirsty, let those who want the water of life take it as a gift. Take it as a gift. I believe there are two types of people that are watching this broadcast tonight. And I want to address both groups. 
I believe the first group of people that has tuned in by Facebook and by live stream and by television is those who are not satisfied. You're looking at the world around you and you're watching the government issues that's happening. You're watching our culture and what's taking place in our world right now, especially America. And you're watching the shutdown of the church and, and, and what we're going through, but you are not satisfied. You've tuned in because you're longing and you're looking for a manifestation or a move of the Spirit of God. You've come by the, you may not be in this studio with us, but you've come to the wells of revival and you're here because you are desiring something more than just church. You're desiring something more than religion. You're desiring a move of the Holy Spirit. You're saying, I, I, my thirst is not being quenched. Uh, I, can't, I can't just be satisfied with a Sunday morning service uh, online by Facebook. I can't be satisfied with just a, a, a cute little sermon. There's something in me that's saying, my spirit is saying, if I don't get a drink, I'm going, I'm going to get... I'm, I'm I'm going, I'm going to die in this time that I am because the world is in a famine. The world is in a critical situation, and I've got to get to the wells of the Holy Spirit. I need the anointing now. I need the Holy Spirit now more than I've ever needed it. So I believe that's the first group that has tuned in to this broadcast tonight. But there's another group that's watching there's pastors and evangelists and teachers and, 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 and church leaders that you're tuned in tonight and will tune in later, and, and you're that second group that I'm going to preach to. You are the kingdom voices for this hour. You are the leaders that's, that's got the courage to do what no one else is doing. You're the pastors that's got the courage to do what others is not doing. You're, you're willing to, to, to take this, the cap off of the wells of the Holy Ghost, and, and, and you're realizing that there are flocks and there are sheep, and there are there, there's church folk that are thirsty for a move of the Holy Ghost, and you know your responsibility, even if you get criticized, even if it's unpopular, I feel like preaching tonight, even if it's not the trend of, of what's happening, you're willing to take the risk, to take the lid off of the well and say, come and drink, come Come and drink, all who are thirsty. Come and drink of the gift of life. Tonight is not a sermon. Tonight's an invitation. It's an invitation to the thirsty flocks that are watching tonight. It's an invitation to the men and women of God who are called the fivefold ministry who has been appointed to lead in this time of crisis. It's an invitation to those that are standing at the wells thirsty. It's an invitation to those who have been sent by God to take the lid off of the wells and allow this generation to drink of the Spirit of God. The gift is available. The gift is available. I, I don't care what somebody has told you. I want you to know the gift of the Holy Ghost is available today in America. Woo! Ha! Huh. The gift of the Holy Ghost is available. The gifts of the Holy Spirit is available. Miracles are still available today. Healing is still available today. Prophecy is still available today. Signs and wonders are still manifesting today. The gift is here. Just say that. The gift is here. We're in a gift season. No better gift that can be given than the gift of the Holy Spirit to the church in this season. I was thinking to myself, what if I had an opportunity to interview the Holy Ghost? What if I would get, get to sit down in a studio like this? And I like to interview people. I'm not as good as Sister Donnette at it, but I, I try. I'm learning. But if I got to sit with the Holy Spirit and ask the Holy Spirit some questions, I wonder what the response of the Holy Ghost would be. I think my first question in the, in the interview would be, Holy Spirit, what is your passion? And I believe the response of the Holy Spirit would be this. My heart or my passion is to see God's people pursue and accept me in their lives. 
And my response to that answer would be, why? And I believe the Holy Ghost would say this, because when I am welcome, I come to transform and change and carry out the will of the Father in the lives of those who receive me. I believe uh, one of the questions I would ask the Holy Spirit in an interview is, what have you done since the upper room? You're famous for the upper room, Holy Spirit. We read about it. We learn about it. But what have you done since Acts chapter 2? And I believe the response the Holy Spirit would have in the interview is this. I've been busy since Acts chapter 2. I was at every great awakening that took place on the earth. I was there. I was in the middle of every prayer meeting that took place since the book of Acts. I've been there. I was at Azusa Street with William Seymour when the fire would fall on the storefront building as revival broke out in America. I was there. I was at Cane Ridge in the hills of Kentucky when people would shake by the thousands under the power of my spirit and there was an awakening in the Appalachian Mountains. I was there. I believe the Holy Spirit would say I was under the tents with Oil Roberts. I was in the prayer lines with Jack Cole. I was there with A. Allen when demons would manifest and people would get set free. I believe the Holy Spirit said, I was in every prayer meeting with John Kilpatrick, and I was there on that, on that Father's Day in 1995 when revival broke out in Pensacola. I've been busy since the day of Pentecost. My next question to the Holy Spirit would be this. Holy Spirit, what do you say about the critics of you and what you do in the church? And I believe the Holy Spirit's response in the interview would be this. I don't answer to my critics, but I answer to the will of the Father on the earth. And I think my final question to the Holy Spirit would be, if you had an opportunity, Holy Spirit, if I could give you the opportunity by a camera to speak to every church in America, 350,000 churches in America, if I had you given you the opportunity to speak to every one of them, what would you say? And I believe the response of the Holy Spirit would be this. The Spirit is saying to the bride, come. Those who are thirsty, come. <laughs> come and drink of the water of life, for it is a gift. I want you to know tonight the Holy Spirit is available, and he's available for you. He's here in this meeting. He's, he's going through these cameras. He's going through your, your phone, your computer, your television. He's wanting to do a work in your life. He's wanting to move in this moment right here. Time is the most precious thing we have. Time is the most valuable thing we have in our life. And when you lose time, you cannot get time back. And we find that time uh, is different, and it comes in different ways. First of all, there's what they call Cronus time. That's the measurement of, measurement of time. It's where the clocks tick, that every day we have 24 hours, 60 minutes in an hour, 60 seconds in a minute, that we have seven days in a week, 365 days in a year. That, that's time. That's a measurement of time. But in the midst of that measurement, there's kairos time. It's a moment that you have to seize. It's a moment that you have to grab. It's a moment that heaven opens up. It's a moment that takes place within the measurement of time. The Lord said, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Amen. That in the measurement of time, and, and, and that there is a set time that God has put for somebody to respond to his spirit. I feel this tonight. 
That in the measurement of 220, in this year, in this moment of time, these 365 days, this year that's been labeled as the year of, 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 the, of the virus, the pandemic, the year of, of, of election results and all that's going on, in the measurement of this year, I believe there is a Kairos time, that there is a set time that if we respond, to that moment that there will be an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Paul said this. Paul the apostle said, there is an amazing door before me, an amazing opportunity for ministry. He said there will be resistance, but he says the, the opportunity is greater than the resistance. I read that this morning in my devotional time. I shared it in a little Facebook post this morning with some viewers. Maybe some of you are watching right now that watched this morning. I believe that we must look at where we're at in this time of history. And we must say, this is not a letdown, but this is an open door. Yeah. It's a door for ministry. It's an opportunity to walk into something we have never walked into before. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost all over that. That this is a Kairos moment, an amazing moment, an opportunity. Yes, there's resistance. There's resistance against the kingdom of God right now. But the door of opportunity, we will never get this moment back. We need to walk into what God has right now. Doors come in different ways. Doors, sometimes people open doors for you. I'm here tonight because somebody opened this opportunity to me. Sister Donette gave our, our ministry this opportunity. She opened the door, a door of ministry, an opportunity. Some of you, you are in ministry right now because somebody opened the door for you. You're being used of God right now because somebody Seize the moment and they open the door for you. Don't ever take that for granted. Don't ever take doors that someone has opened for you for granted. It's, it's moments that they, they said, you know what? I see something in that person and I have access to give them opportunity. Then there are doors that you have to open yourself. Doors that, that, that you have to take the, 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 the courage to do it yourself, that no one's going to do it but you. If it's going to happen in your life, you've got to do it. If revival's going to break out in your city, you might be the one that has to beat that door down, walk through that door, take that opportunity to know that you're called for this moment, to know that you're called for this season, to know that you're called into this, this moment, even when you don't see it producing don't walk away from the opportunity. Yeah. I've watched people many times, they walk away from their moments too quick. They walk away from their opportunities too fast. Because they don't see the results or the excitement of it is not there anymore. It's not exciting as it was when you first walked into it. For years I've had people in my ministry team, probably over the years, 20-some people has worked with me throughout the years. I have a good team now. But I watched people when they would come. It was exciting at the beginning. I gave them the door. I gave them the opportunity. They joined me, and it was exciting. But the excitement of that season faded away. Then all of a sudden, they never really just quit on me. They just kind of started fading away because they forgot the opportunity that was there. Don't let this opportunity of your life fade away. Don't say, well, Church is not important anymore as it used to be. Ministry is not as effective as it used to be. No, just keep working that door. Keep moving that cap off. Keep pushing that thing off. And because when you open a door, it's not just going to change your life, but it's going to change those around you. I'm about to 
Amen. Because God is always generational. It's more than just about you. It's more than just about how you feel and what's going. What there, there are Jacobs in this moment that God has put you right by the well of revival, and He needs you to take the incentive to open that well, to open that door, because it's about the next generation. It's about the sons and the daughters. It's about what God has been planning for for generations to do right now. Amen. A door, a great door that's set before us. Woo! And there are doors that are timed. Timed doors. That you're not going to get through them unless it's the right time. Bank vaults have a time set on them that those bank vaults won't open until a certain time. There are doors that we have that are, that are timed. Woo! I feel the Holy Ghost on this. Amen. That are timed. The sons of Issachar had an understanding of the time and the season. And I believe we are at a timed opportunity. That it's a timed moment right now. In this moment, December the 1st, 220, in a pandemic, in a year of uncertainty, a year who we don't even know who our future president is yet for sure. Come on. A year that things are unstable. But I feel like Paul, I feel like there's an opportunity at this moment for the Holy Ghost to do something in America. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah! That this is our season of breakthrough. This is our season of shifting and changing. This is our season of God moving it around because somebody seized the moment. Jacob, Jacob comes to this moment in his life. Jacob, who had wrestled with his own identity, wrestled with who he was, wrestled with his situations and finding out his destiny and all that was going on. And Jacob comes in Genesis 29 to this moment, this moment where he sees flocks gathered around a well. Sheep is symbolic of the church, the flocks. These sheep, the Bible said there were three flocks. There are three types of church people in every church every Sunday morning. Jesus said there are those who are hot, cold, and lukewarm. <laughs> this opportunity is for all of the church. It's for whosoever. God wants to pour out his spirit on the lukewarm, on the cold, and those who are on fire. God wants to move in, in our midst right now. One of the challenges of doing what I'm doing right now is I'm preaching to three flocks right now. I'm preaching to those who are thirsty for God, who are on fire for God, who can't get enough of God. I'm preaching to you. I've got to give you enough that will satisfy you. Then there are those who are lukewarm that's watching tonight. You're riding the fence. You're playing church with God. You're, you're, you're halfway in. You're halfway out. And you're miserable. You're miserable in your life because you're not totally sold out to God. You're trying to play church in 220 like you did in 219. But devils are unleashed in this time. It's making the lukewarm church miserable. But then there's that third group I'm preaching to. Your heart's gotten cold. <laughs> You're cold against the gospel. You're cold against the presence of God. You can't feel anything anymore. You've, you, you, you've turned from God so many times that, 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 that you're no longer phased by the Spirit of God. But tonight, I'm praying breakthrough for every cold-hearted saint, every cold-hearted man and woman of God that's watching, that you're going to feel the river of the Holy Ghost. You're going to feel that well spring up in your life, that you're going to have a, a, an awakening in your spirit and so they're gathered around and Ezekiel, uh, 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 Jacob comes and he comes and the Bible said it's the hottest part of the day. It's the hottest part of the day. Things are hot right now. Spiritually, things are intense right now. The world, the, the world issues, it's hot right now. We're, we're on a hotbed of issues in our world right now. It's high noon. It's, high, it's, it's a showdown in the spirit realm that's taking place right now. And, and the Bible said it was the hot of the day, and Jacob comes. Now, Jacob is a son of a well digger. Woo! If 
For his father, Isaac, redug the wells of his heritage. And Jacob comes to this well. And he comes and he sees the flocks gathered. And he sees the issue of the hour. He sees the heat of the day. He sees where they're at. And, and he's, he's not the only one there. They are assigned, uh, assigned shepherds that are there. And he says to them, the sheep are thirsty. And they said, it's not time to water them. We keep the stone on the well until it's on our schedule, until we say so. They saw the need of tradition. And tradition says we don't open the well at high noon. Tradition says we don't do it this way. Tradition says we've got to have three fast songs and one slow one. And Sister Hoot Nanny, read the announcements. And Brother Save a Pew, preach a 15 minute sermon. And we get them out in an hour and 15 minutes before noon. That's what tradition says. Tradition says we don't have miracles in our church. Tradition says we don't, we don't receive the gift of the Holy Ghost in our denomination. This is the way we've done it, and we'll keep the cap on it until we say it's time for them to drink. They saw the need of tradition. They, they wanted to control the well. We've got the reason America is where it is today. It's not because of the political system. It's because of the church system. We've had too many shepherds that has controlled the Spirit of God, and they have numbed down our congregations to dry, dehydrated flocks of people who have not experienced a drink from the wells of revival in 30 years. But I believe there is a Jacob generation that's in our pulpits right now, that there is a Jacob generation that's coming out in this moment, and they're seeing, they're hearing the cry of the sheep. The cry of the sheep is way louder than the cry of tradition. And they're saying we can't let them die of thirst. We must take the stone off. We must uncap the wells and let the sheep drink. They're dehydrated. Many of our churches has given the Holy Ghost a pink slip. Many of our leaders, has denominations have given the Holy Spirit a pink slip. And they said, you're fired. We don't want you in our church services. We don't want you in our meetings. We know how to do church. We know when to, to do it the way we want to do it. And we don't need you. But meanwhile, there is a spiritual fatigue, a dehydration that has entered into our American church. Some of the signs of the natural of, of dehydration is fatigue. The Daniel chapter 7 said, In the last days he will wear out the saints of God. We got weary saints in our churches. Fatigue, tired spiritually because we, we need to drink from the well of the Holy Spirit. But we have leaders that's saying it's not for now. I come by to tell you, if there's ever been a time to uncap the well, it's now. We need the Holy Ghost to move now. We need revival to bring forth now. We need the Spirit of God to spring up now. Now is the time. This is the moment. We need an outpouring. I am thirsty. I'm thirsty. I'm thirsty for a move of God. The second sign of dehydration is confusion. Word of God says he's not an author of confusion, but he's a God of a sound mind. I prayed for a young person this weekend that was confused, confused about their salvation, confused about their spiritual identity, confused about their sexual identity. There's a generation that's confused in their mind. Our nation has operated under confusion in the whole year of 220, confusion from the White House to the schoolhouse, confusion from the courthouse to, 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 the, to the marketplace. Uh, there's been a spirit of confusion in our nation. God is not an author of confusion. God does not work in an environment of confusion. <laughs> God is a God of a sound mind. God's a God of peace. Oh, we need peace in our nation. You need peace in your life. 
Amen. The sign of dehydration or lack of water is the is is confusion. Another sign is is that 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 your muscles cramp up. Or other words, there's a restriction of movement. That the moving of the Holy Ghost is restricted. Man, this is good preaching. That the moving of the Holy Spirit is 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 uh, constricted. That there's no freedom to preach. I can tell when I travel, when I go to places, if I have freedom to minister or if I don't. And when there's been a dry season, the moving of the gifts is restricted. The gift of prophecy is restricted. The gift of healing and miracles are restricted. And the last sign of dehydration is you cannot produce tears any longer. Other words, you lose your sensitivity to the presence of God. What used to move you does not move you any longer. What used to cause tears to come to your eyes, your response to his presence is no longer there. Jesus said the devil comes or the spirits of hell come looking for dry places, looking for dry places, seeking rest. The, the, the meaning to the word dry place is a place with no water. <laughs> There's a lot of our churches that has no water. A lot of our nations, our regions of America is lacking spiritual water. And, and, and the enemies, uh, the dry places are playgrounds for the enemy because the translation to that word rest is not that he finds a place to rest, but it means it's a place of recreation. It's a playground for devils. The devil loves dry choirs and dry worship teams because he can tear them up and bring havoc on the platform. The devil loves dry churches. Oh, this is good, Holy Ghost, because he can, he can move and work and have fun in dry places. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be a place where the devil feels at home. I don't want to be, I don't want my house to be a house where the devil feels comfortable at. I want the river of God flowing. I want the well of the Holy Ghost flowing. I need revival in my life. Because where there is water, the enemy cannot work his work. We need a move of the Holy Ghost. It's high day. It's hot. Things are urgent. Urgent in this hour. And Jacob, he stands at the well and he responds to the cry of the sheep. They were crying out for water. I hear the cry tonight in the spirit. I hear you crying. You're saying, I can't keep going without a move of the Holy Ghost. I hear the cry of you, pastor. You're saying, I can't keep in ministry unless there's a move of the Holy Ghost. We can't keep doing it the way we do it. Somebody's got to uncap the whale. Somebody has to seize the opportunity. There has to be somebody that says, you know what? In the midst of a pandemic, I see an amazing door of opportunity. Opportunity, a door that's so amazing to, of ministry that there will be adversaries. But I'm not going to let this door slam shut. I'm going to open up the door to a move of the Holy Ghost. Somebody say, yeah. Jacob saw the need of the sheep. The shepherd saw the need of tradition. And Jacob did something. The Bible said he removed the stone. When Rachel started coming, who was the love of his life. See, what was different than his father is his father opened up the wells out of tradition. But Jacob opened up the wells for the future. He said, this is going to be for the future. I'm going to do this crazy thing right now. Because I believe in my future, I'm going to have children. And they're going to drink from this well. In the future, I'm going to have a family, and she, they're going to drink from this well. I believe there are some of us that we know where we came from. We know our Pentecostal heritage. And for years, I feel like I've been Isaac. I've been redigging that well. I've been preaching Pentecost when it wasn't popular, speaking about revival when it wasn't the trend of the modern-day church. I feel like I've been that Isaac for a long time, but I feel a different anointing on me now. I'm not digging the wells for the past, but I feel like God's calling me to dig for the future. We need leaders that will lead from the future. 
God needs men and women tonight that will see beyond a pandemic, that will see beyond a crisis that we're in right now. While all the world is living from day to day, where are the prophets that can see into the next year? The ones that will see the future and say, you know what? The best is yet to come. There's an amazing opportunity for ministry right on the other side of this pandemic. There's a move of God that's waiting for a generation right beyond the situation we're in right now. 350,000 churches or so in America. If we don't have a Jacob leadership, many of our flocks are going to die spiritually. Right now, one-third of the church has not yet come back to their, their auditoriums. One-third of our churches in America, every mainstream denomination, one-third has not yet left their, their tablet at home and left Facebook at home and came back to the house of God. We're in a critical moment. We're in a critical moment. And here's the thing that made the story of Jacob different than the story of Isaac. The wells of Isaac was stopped up by the enemy. The enemy stopped the wells. But the wells of the day of Jacob was stopped by the shepherds. Not the enemy. What's so different where we're at right now? is that the wells are not in the hands of our enemy. The left extremists, the, 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 the culture shifters of our, denomin- uh, our nation, our world right now, they are not in control of the wells. Satan does not have his hand on the wells of revival. The ones we have to deal with are the leadership of our institutions, in America, our spiritual institutions, the professors in our Bible schools that says the Holy Ghost is no longer relevant, the pastors in our mega churches that says the moving of the gifts are no longer relevant. That's who stops up the wells right now. That's who we have to deal with right now. I'm not here to cause strife or division because you don't have to fight with your brothers about what uh, your doctrine or your opinion. Just be a Jacob and just go over out of the cry of the sheep and say, you know what? There's enough thirsty people in our city that wants revival, that we'll have revival on a Wednesday night, that there's enough people in our city city that's thirsty, that we'll open up our church even if we get uh, 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 get hate mail because we're gathered together. Listen, if they can go to Walmart, I went to Walmart today, the aisles were packed with people. And if they can do that in Walmart, we can get in our churches and we can assemble together and we can worship with a mask or without a mask, with a hazmat suit, whatever. But I'm not, I refuse, I refuse to stop up the move of God because we need an outpouring of the Holy Holy Ghost right now, right now, right now. Jesus said in John chapter 7, he said, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink, and out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. That there are streams of the Spirit of God that needs to break forth, that needs to flow in this hour, that we need the river of God to move because the river transforms and changes and it molds us. You know what the river does in the natural? This Mississippi River has, it has transformed the earth. The earth has changed because of this river that's a mile away from this TV studio. It has changed the earth from Minnesota to the Gulf. The earth has been transformed. It has left a mark in the earth. The reason we need the Spirit of God to be be free to flow in our generation because the river leaves a mark. The Holy Spirit wants to leave a mark on you. It wants to engrave you with with its presence. 
I want to be engraved by the Spirit of God. I, I, want, I want the Spirit of God to leave a mark on me. Hallelujah. Oh, we're living in the last days, and the Bible tells us there will be one kind of a mark on the earth for those that will yield to that mark. Oh, but I'm looking for another mark. I want the Holy Ghost to mark me. I want to be engraved by the Spirit of God that when I walk into the city, the river's flowing through me, that when I come into a situation that the devil's around me really, Realize that I'm not giving in. I'm not laying down. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not giving up. No matter what happens, I'm going to keep kicking the well open. I'm going to keep kicking it open. This weekend, I'm heading to Kansas, and I'm going to kick the well open in Kansas. And then I'm going to Kentucky, and I'm going to kick it open in Kentucky. Then I'm going to Tennessee, and I'm going to kick it. I'm just going to keep. Keep, keep kicking the wells open. And for well, why? Because there are thirsty people on the earth that saying, I need a preacher that will preach under the anointing. I need a worshiper that will worship under the anointing. I need a church where I can wade out into the waters and get ankle deep and get knee deep and get so far in that I have to swim in the river. I want to get overwhelmed by the Holy Ghost. I need the anointing. Why? Because it breaks the yoke. It sets the captive free. It mends the broken heart. The anointing brings good news. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Breakthrough. Jacob became a breakthrough for that moment. The sheep were able to quench their thirst because of one radical man who didn't even have his whole life together. I mean, he was tore up from the floor up himself. But he was courageous enough to respond to the thirst around him. Pastors, seize this moment. See it as an opportunity to open up the wells of revival. Right where you're at, just lift your hands. Right there in your home, just lift your hands. There are thirsty people. I was preaching in Winchester, Kentucky, awesome church, the Ark of Mercy Church. Give an altar call one night. This was in the month of June, and there was a young man who was going through rehab, a drug addict. And he was down at the end of the prayer line, and he was just, I mean, crying out, tears just flowing down his cheek. And uh, the music's playing. People are shouting. People are dancing. We was in revival, and I worked my way down to this young man, got close enough to this young man and to hear what he was crying. And here's a young man who had been through so much in his life, fighting addiction, going through rehab, and he's in this amazing moment, and he's crying out to God, and he's crying out, I want more. I want more. I want more. He was so new to God, he didn't know how to even say a, a big, complicated prayer. He was just saying, I want more. I want more. Meanwhile, in the same prayer line, like many prayer lines, I come to somebody who came to the prayer line, but you go to pray with them, and you feel like you hit a cap. You hit a stone. We become so religious that we control the moving of the Holy Spirit. Let's break the wells. Let's have breakthrough in our nation. Wouldn't it be amazing if the wells just broke open and the Spirit of God started flowing through our cities, through the streets of our cities, through our nation? Instead of rioting in our streets, there's an outpouring of the Holy Ghost in the streets of our cities across America. We have about 10 minutes left. We're going to finish this service. First of all, I'm going to pray and declare. and We're just going to break through with prayer. Those of you that are on Facebook, stay with us a little bit after that. We're going to worship. We have a great worship leader with us tonight. We're, going to, we're just going to flow in the Holy Ghost for a few moments. If you're watching and you've never been baptized in the Holy Spirit, it's a gift. You say, Brother Bob, I've been saved. That's a gift. Salvation is the first greatest gift. It's the greatest gift. 
But God knew it would be hard for us to walk out our faith in 220. He knew in the midst of a pandemic and a world crisis and all that's going on that by ourselves it would be very hard to walk out our faith. Many people are losing their faith today. So the Lord sent a second gift, your partner, your helper, your life source, the Holy Spirit. And just like you've asked God for that first gift of salvation, just ask him for that second gift. In that interview, my first question is, what would you say? What is your passion? What would you say to the people in the Holy Ghost in that interview said, my passion is to move in the lives of those that accept me, that will receive me. Will you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost tonight? My denomination, the, the, don't, I'm not talking about your denomination. I'm talking about you. Will you receive the gift? I have preached for 45 minutes, and all I did was uncap the well so you can drink from the water of life right now. Satan comes to kill, still destroy, but Jesus said, I come to give life and life more abundantly. In the last month and a half, we have been seeing people by the multitudes receive the Holy Spirit. Young people, children, just like that. And I believe that's going to happen tonight. Here's what I want you to do as Pastor Danny begins to worship. I want you just to lift your hands, surrender to God, and say, Lord, I'm thirsty. I'm thirsty. I'm not satisfied. I need your spirit. I need the gift of the Holy Ghost. And just begin to ask him. Open your mouth because you can't drink with your mouth shut. Open your mouth and just begin to worship. And I believe many, many, you're going to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Many who have become dry. You once had the river flowing through you, but you've been in a dry place. You've become dry. You're dehydrated. God's going to refill you right now. Take a drink. Drink of the river of life. God, I thank you right now all across America. I thank you, God, for an outpouring of your spirit right now. In the name of Jesus, I pray for those that are watching in Oklahoma. Be filled. Be filled. <laughs> Be filled. Locust Grove, Claremore, Tahlequah, Shoto, Miami, Tulsa. Drink. Be filled. Be filled. Missouri. Be filled. Those of you that are watching from Missouri, be filled right now. Drink. Drink. Indiana, drink. Kentucky, drink. Come on, the well is flowing right now. Receive, receive ye the Holy Spirit. Receive them. Receive the gift right now. Come on. You're a citizen of the kingdom of God. Every kingdom has its own language. Every kingdom has its own language. <laughs> We're going to Puerto Rico. When we go to Puerto Rico, they have their own language. I'm telling you, you're a citizen. If you're saved, you're a citizen of the kingdom of God, and it has a kingdom language. <laughs> Go ahead. Open your mouth. Some of you have been baby talking, but God's about to increase your language. That's it. That's it. That's it. Out of your belly. If you're thirsty, come drink. Come drink from the well. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. There's a gift in this program. The gift of the Holy Ghost is here right now. Receive it. Receive it all across America. Receive the Spirit of God. Revival. Revival. An awakening. Come on, in the studio, just pray in the Holy Ghost. I'm believing people are being filled all over America. Come on, saints. Come on. Hey, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You've been dry too long. You've been dry too long. The devil's been playing in your, in your home. The devil's been playing in your ministry. We get the Holy Ghost flowing again. Preacher, get the Holy Ghost back in your ministry. Come on, evangelist, quit worrying about building your ministry. Just keep the wells open. Just be the man of God he's called you to be. 
Come on, saints. Come on. We got four minutes. Four minutes before we go up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Some of you are shaking. That's the Holy Ghost. Amen. He's shaking you. He's shaking you. He's filling you up. Oh, I know you can't hardly stand. That's okay. Just fall on your knees right there in your living room. Let God overwhelm you. Let revival break out in your home right now. Ha! Hallelujah. That's all right, wife. You've been watching this program and your husband's in the other room, but he's feeling God right now. I'm telling you, your husband is feeling the Lord. He might be on that computer playing some game, but the Holy Ghost is flowing from where you are, from that TV camera into that room. Oh, God, get a hold of that backslidden husband. Get a hold of that back, backslidden hu husband in the name of the Lord. Come on, I feel God moving all over this. Hey, glory. <laughs> Woo! Hey, hey. Go ahead, wade in. Wade in. Get in the river. Get in the river. Get in the river. No more dead church. No more dry religion. Oh, we refuse to let those who control the churches of a nation control the Holy Ghost. We're going to have a revolution. We're going to have an outbreak. We're going to have a breakthrough. God, let revival break out in every denomination in America. Let revival break out in every denomination in the assembly of God, the church of God, the four square, the Baptist, Southern Baptist, the, the, the apostolic, the black church, the white church, the rich church, the poor church. God, let there be an outbreak of the Holy Ghost. In these next three weeks, let the river of revival begin to flow to every every pulpit in our, in our nation. God, a spiritual awakening right now. We want more. We want more. We want more. The Holy, Holy Ghost is in this studio. The Holy Spirit's in this studio. Come on. Oh, I believe what we're seeing happening here is happening in homes all across America right now. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, Lord, you gave me this opportunity three years ago. You opened this door for me to stand in front of this camera. I refuse to be like other shepherds. I refuse to keep the cap on the well to impress men. I don't care. I want to be radical. I want to be radical. I want to be the ambassador of revival. I will preach revival. I will preach Pentecost. I will not be ashamed to stand in front of this camera and be radical for the Holy Ghost. We need the Spirit of God. Send revival to America. Hey. We got one minute left. If God's moving on you, if you're watching before we go off, get a hold of somebody from the TV station tomorrow. Get a hold of somebody. If you're watching by Facebook, just begin to leave a comment. Come on. Come on. Amen. If you're on Facebook, stay with us for the next few moments. Those of you that are watching by television, we thank you for being with us. We thank you for tuning in. God bless you. Support WTJR. Let them know this Christmas season what they have meant for you. Many of you have been shut in. This has been the only church you've had. We love you. God bless you. Holy Spirit, move in hospitals, move in nursing homes. Lord, we give you glory and honor in your name. We thank you, God. There's a door of opportunity right now in our nation for revival. God bless you all. We love you. We appreciate you. You have a great Christmas. Enjoy your family. Enjoy those around you. Look how God has blessed you in spite of everything. Join us next year for Revive America. Come on, Pastor. Let's just worship. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Yes, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory. We wait for you. Yes, Lord. We wait for you. Thank you, Lord. We wait for you. Thank you, Lord. To walk in the room. Thank you, Lord. Here we are standing in your presence. Here we are standing in your presence. Kind of glory, she kind of glory, she kind of glory. Come now, here we are standing in your presence. Here we are standing in your presence. She kind of glory. Come now, release the 
thirsty for the Lord you're not satisfied that's why you're staying with us I want to pray for you Donnie Skinner uh, Larry Jr Joyce Waters I see a lot of names I recognize it's on here God has us for such a time as this whether you're a pastor whatever capacity you are in ministry God has put us in this moment in the set of time since the beginning to the end that Cronus time that time that just keeps ticking but God picked us to be a voice in this moment of time there's an opportunity and I know many of you that are watching you're, 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 you're weary you're exhausted many of you pastors they have tuned in or will tune in later because we get just as many people that watch later that you're just exhausted trying to figure out what to do in this season. I get it. I've been there. This has been one of the most challenging years of my ministry. Just trying to wonder where the next step is going to be. Wondering where we're going to go as a ministry next. Wondering if there's even going to be Opportunities in the future for what I do. I, I get it. I've been there. The fear of the finances, the fear, all those things. I'm walking it right with you, just in a different dimension. Pastors, evangelists walk in different, uh, 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 we're all in different arenas, but we're all together. This has been a time of crisis. But this is what I, this is what I feel in my spirit. I'm just being real. Something happened to me today when I read what Paul said. I encourage you to go to the Passion Translation. Read that. Read how the Passion Translate. It, it says there's an amazing opportunity. A door that has opened for ministry. For ministry. Whew, that changes everything. Especially the tag that he puts on the end of that conversation. He said, yes, there's opposition. But the, the opportunity is so great. Never have we in our lifetime seen such opposition against the gospel as what we have seen. And if we're not careful, we will look at the opposition more than we look at the opportunity. Man, we're in a, we're in a Kairos moment. Whew. This moment, in Cronus time, this moment where the clock is ticking, Krona hasn't stopped the clock of time ticking. 
An election has not stopped it. Crisis has not. It has ticked through World War I. Time has marched through through the Dark Ages. It marched through the First Great Awakening. It just, it keeps marching. But in the midst of the marching of time is doors of opportunity that we cannot miss. In spite of what the world is saying, people are thirsty. They're thirsty for God. Before we go off, I just want to pray with those that are watching. I feel like there's many a ministry that, that, that's, that's with us right now. First of all, I say thank you. Thank you for supporting Revive America. Sometimes we feel like all we do is promote. And I know as pastors, that's all you feel like you do is invite people to church. But we just got to keep plugging away at it. Just got to keep doing it. Just keep doing it. A year ago, God told me to start Christian radio and Christian television. And there are times I'll log on and there's hundreds of people. And there's times I'll log on and there's nobody. But I just got to keep doing it. It's an opportunity for this moment. I look at this station. I look at these, this great team. I'm telling you, there's a great team that makes all this happen at WTJR. Listen, see, I can get on my computer and I can see exactly how many people are watching I can see exactly how many people are listening, but they can't do that here at WTJR. They do this day in, day out by faith. By faith, because it's a door of opportunity. Pastor, you have not seen the influence that you've made in your community. Evangelist, you have not seen the, the, the influence that you've made in the world that God has sent you to. Don't lay down. Don't quit. Just keep knocking the door down. Keep on capping the well. Trust the Holy Ghost because he wants to move in 220. I love you all. I feel the Lord in here. I want to pray with you all before we go off. There's two different audiences. There's the TV audience and there's a Facebook audience that I speak to. And I want to pray with you before we sign off today. Lord, I thank you for every pastor. I thank you, God, for every man and woman that has logged on to this live stream. God, some of them are weary, some are tired. Some are battling with confusion, battling with what's going on all around them. But yet they're hearing the cry of a remnant that's saying we're thirsty. And God, I speak to the Jacobs that are watching. God, that they get new courage and new strength to just keep knocking that door open, to just keep pushing that stone off of the wells so the desperate can come to the presence of the Lord. So those who are dehydrated can drink of life. Spirit and bride says, come. Those who hear, come. Those who are thirsty, come. Come and drink of the water of life, the gift. Oh, God, I thank you for every pastor. I honor them. I thank you, God, for every servant. I honor them. Every mama that's trying to keep her family together through all this. Every father that's, that's, that's having a battle uh, of fear and worry. God, right now, refresh them. Let the waters of refreshing just begin to flow through them right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. It's the peace of God. It's the waters of God flowing. You were born for such a time as this. This is our moment. This is our time. God bless you all. You have a great Christmas. We appreciate everybody that supports WTJR, that supports Revive America. We love you all. Have a great Christmas. 
We're going to be back here next month. We're doing another year of this. Share this Facebook. Share it. Somebody else may need it. You may not it felt like you needed it, but maybe somebody else did. You might be the Jacob that uncaps the well for someone else. Hey, have a great night. God bless you all. Bye. We love you.